Hi, uh, in this video I'll show you how to create a break-even chart. So let's say for example you have a product that you are going to sell. There are some fixed costs. In example, we have some fixed cost. So we have some variable cost on the unit. It's per unit. So here we have uh, 35 cents per unit. And we're looking to sell the unit, each unit at 50 cents. Now th these particular items will drive this table down here. Uh, we also have a unit increment and basically this is just for display purposes. This will help us chart out the graph here. It's for display. So we have it in increments of 500, so 0 to 500 to 1,000, etc., all the way up to 4,000. And basically uh, these four pieces of data help drive the chart and uh, to a, a, an extent also this table here. So this table is kind of based on the data that we put in here. Now the break-even table here, basically this is telling us uh, how many units do we need to sell in order to break even. So in this case, uh, with a 400 fixed cost, $35, 35 cents variable cost, and a sales price of 50 cents each unit, we would have to sell a little over 2,600 units to break even. And the dollar amount for that is a little bit over $1,300. So I'll show you how to create this type of chart and the table below. So let's go ahead and go into our uh, demo tab here and let me go and show you how it's done. So we have our demo tab here. Let's say that we, let's say that we have our fixed cost. Let's do the same as what we had on the other, the other worksheet. Let me go and just copy it over. So let me go ahead and copy this. Control C to copy. Go back here and control V to paste. That way I copied over the same the formatting too, the dollar signs and whatnot. So for the increments, I think I'm gonna stay the same at 500. So the X axis, everything is gonna increment by 500 units. And also to fill out the, the break even units here, there is a formula for the break even. So basically it's gonna be our fixed cost uh, divided by the sales price minus the variable cost. So it's gonna be equal to this fixed cost, right, divided by let me go in parentheses, the sales price minus the variable uh, cost per unit. Uh, close parentheses, press enter. And there we have our break even units at a little over 2600. I'm gonna move that decimal away. I'm gonna go ahead and decrement the decimal so we have a whole number there. Now the break even price is going to be the units multiplied by the sales price. So I'm gonna have that multiply by the sales price. And now we know that the break even, I'm gonna go ahead and make that a, a dollar sign. Go ahead and go under general, go to currency, and also uh, reduce the decimal places. So it's a whole number. So it's gonna be a little over $1,300. So this is the same as what we saw in the previous worksheet. What I need to do now is I need to populate this table with that data up here. What I have is I have basically five columns. I'm really only gonna be using uh, three of the columns here, but I have five columns here. It'll just kind of uh, detail the fixed cost and the variable cost uh, per unit, but I'm not gonna use these two columns. It's just gonna be for illustrative purposes for this table. So the units, I'm gonna start out at zero. And for the next column, it's basically gonna be uh, an addition of 500 plus whatever's on the previous uh, record, previous row. So this is gonna be equal to this amount, and I'm gonna press the F4 key so it's gonna lock that value in because when I copy it down, uh, that, va that cell reference will stay the same at B5. If I didn't put B5, which is called an absolute cell reference when, when you have the dollar signs in front of it, if it was uh, just B5 with no dollar signs, it'd be a relative cell reference. Basically, when I copy it down, that would change to like B6, B7, etc. But once I lock that in, it stays at B5. So what I'm gonna do is, it's gonna be B5 plus whatever is above, right? So when I copy it down, it's always gonna copy B5 plus whatever was above it. So if I press Control Enter, you'll see it increase to 500. Let's go up to 4,000. So I'm gonna go ahead, click the fill handle down here and drag it down. So once I drag it down, let me see, that goes to 4,000, which I wanted it. So it dragged it down about eight cells, right? So you can see the eight cells here, there's a count of eight. For my fixed cost, it's always gonna be the same. So let's say, for example, we, we manufacture a unit, there's gonna be some sunk cost, uh, maybe buying some machinery, etc. That fixed cost is always gonna be the same. So it's gonna be equal to that fixed cost that I identified up here, which is that $400. And again, I'm gonna press the F4 keys when I copy it down, it's all gonna be just referencing cell B1. So if I, if I press Control Enter, you'll see that it's there. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll back down here. And if I go ahead and click the fill handle, and double click it to copy the formula down, you'll notice now it all references that same cell B1, right? This references it, that references it. So that's the fixed cost. 
Now the variable cost will be based off of the units, units times the variable cost per unit. So it's going to equal the variable cost, which is over here, and again I need to press the F4 key to make that an absolute cell reference, so when I copy it down it doesn't change it, and that's going to be multiplied by how many units that I am going to uh, uh, produce or sell or whatever. So if I press enter, of course the first one's going to be zero because there's zero units there. Let me go ahead and scroll down here. And if I double click the fill handle here, it's going to copy that formula down and reference the correct cell. So this one is referencing D15. B2, since it has dollar signs in front of it, it's an absolute cell reference. It's not going to change. So if I double click the fill handle down here, you'll notice that it's going to reference D16 here, but B2 stay the same. And it's going to do the same for the following cells. So that's the variable cost. Now the total cost basically is just the sum of the fixed cost plus the total cost. So I'm going to equal and just use the Excel function sum and open parentheses. And I'm just going to sum up E15 to F15, close parentheses. Press Control Enter to stay in the cell. You'll notice it added those two to 400. So if I double click the fill handle here, it's going to copy it down. And it's going to reference, since these are relative cell references, it's going to change them accordingly. So the next one is going to be E16 to F16. So if I double click it, you'll see now it's done that. E16 to F16, E17 to F17. So it's basically added uh, these two cells for each record or each row that's gone down. So that's for the total cost. Now for the sales, that's basically going to be the sales unit per sales cost per unit or sales price per unit multiplied by the unit here. So that's going to go up back to this table here at the sales price. I'm going to press the F4 key and then multiply it by the unit here. So no need to press F4 here because I want that cell reference to be the same as the row that it's in. So I'm going to go ahead and press Control Enter and you can see it's zero for that one. Let me go ahead and scroll down here and double click the fill handle and you notice now it's gone accordingly. Now for some reason this, this row didn't have the dollar signs, it's not formatted for currency. I'll go ahead and just click on one of the ones that are formatted for currency. Click the Format Painter and what it's going to do is going to copy the same format for the rows, the, the range that I selected. So basically this number and that will all turn into a dollar sign. Now it seemed like it didn't do it because we have these hash marks and basically what it's saying is the column width does not have enough room to visually display the number. So basically the number is still there but it's, not, it's just not visually displaying it correctly. I'm going to go ahead and auto fit the column by double clicking uh, right here in between and you notice now that it fits. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to select the column ranges that I'm going to put for my chart. So I'm going to press the control key and it, it's going to let me select discontiguous cells. If I didn't use, if I wanted to have everything I can just select everything like this but I wanted to select a range from column D14 to D23 and then G14 to H23. So I'm going to use the control key and use my mouse selection to do that. So click on the first cell here and I'm going to select that range and then I'm going to select these ranges here. Now this is a dis discontinuous range selection because because it's not contiguous, there's non, it's non-contiguous, there's a, there's a break in between. Now I'm going to go into insert here and then select the line chart and select the 2D line chart and this is just a regular line chart here. Now it's, selected my, it's given me my chart and there's some things that I want to change here. What it's done is for my horizontal axis, it hasn't really selected it correctly. So what I want to do is go under select data here and for the units, I want to select those labels manually now because it's, it's, it hasn't really picked it up too well. I want to select it from 0 to 4000. So I'm going to click the edit button here and the axis label range, those labels down there, I want to have this range right here. So once I click OK, it's going to correctly identify them. Also I don't need this units, uh, even though I selected it, I don't need those, those units as a series. Uh, basically, I added it in there so I can go ahead and select this later on. So I don't really need that. I'm going to go ahead and click remove. But if you think that, that this disappears, these horizontal categories disappear, it doesn't because I've already selected it earlier. So I can go ahead and click remove. You'll notice that this, this horizontal category stays there for both the total cost series and the sales series. So that is correct. Go ahead and click OK. And now I'm going to go ahead and move this chart up so I have a little bit better view when I do some uh, manipulation of the data here. So this is, this is actually kind of correct right now. So we have our visual identification of our break-even point visually. So we see that the break-even point is at a little over 26, 
2,600 units, which is around here. We have about 2,600 units. It's kind of in the middle here. Uh, actually, this tick mark right here. So we have it right here. And about uh, the break-even dollar amount total is 1,333, which is around right here. So what I want to do right now is uh, if we wanted to kind of make it a little bit more visually appealing, a little bit easier to, to read, I can go ahead and get rid of these grid lines, click on that, press delete. I'm going to put the legend at the bottom. So I'm going to go under layout, go to legend, and then put that at the bottom, right? And I can spread, I can move this out this chart area to make it a little bit bigger now. I can also add a title. Go ahead and add a title here. And I'll just go ahead and call this break even. Break even analysis. Press enter, and you notice that's changed that here right now. The last thing I want to do is I want to add this particular this table view over here in the chart because maybe it's really hard to see the exact detail of where the break even is. And if I wanted to kind of share this chart, just this chart itself, I want to be able to see uh, this data, this 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 detailed data. So what I can do here is I can actually make a copy of this. So I just select that range from A7 to B8, uh, press Control C to copy, and then I'm going to go under here, under paste, and I'm going to paste it as a picture link. So what it does is it pastes a picture link or a picture of that cell selection. I'm going to move it down here. You'll see that it's pasted a picture. It looks like the same thing. But one nice thing about this picture link is it's dynamic, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Let me go ahead and put it into the chart first and kind of resize it. Let me go ahead and press, let me go ahead and see if I can resize it a little bit. Yep, that looks okay. And I'll show you what I mean by dynamic. Let's say, for example, let me go ahead and press escape to get out of that selection here. Let's say, for example, that the sales price, you want to change it from 50 cents to maybe 55 cents. Once I press enter, this calculation should change and also the data in the, in the table should change. And since it changed over here in these cells, we want it to go and reflect in this cell in the chart itself. So let me go ahead and press enter. And you notice now that it has changed because this is basically a picture link. It's linking to the cells there. So every time I change something here, this will also change. So it's kind of a neat little way if you wanted to go ahead and change some variables here, you don't have to go back into the chart itself to kind of change it. It's automatically done. So that's what we can do to create a break-even chart and have a little bit of a dynamic nature with this little picture link in there. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.